I'm gonna make a bold prediction. Backend engineers are gonna split into two different groups. Those who can build what I'm about to show you and those who are stuck building CRUD apps while AI takes their jobs. All right, I know that sounds dramatic, but let me show you something. Right now, the backend engineering umbrella has two roles, the traditional backend engineer and the AI engineer. And if you look at the job posts companies are putting out today, they're all asking for the same thing. Skills that boot camps can't teach, skills most devs have never touched, but skills companies are desperate for this year and the foreseeable future. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you those skills from absolute scratch, production ready, if you will, portfolio worthy. And by the end, you're gonna have something that will make recruiters actually want to respond to your messages. But before we dive in, quick shout out to today's sponsor, MongoDB. They reached out because they're doubling down on AI engineering. And honestly, their new vector search features are becoming my go-to for RAG systems. I'll show you why in just a minute. But let's go ahead and talk about this new skill. It's the ability to build intelligent retrieval systems, taking your company's massive knowledge bases, documents and data, and making them instantly queryable by AI, not just search, not just a chatbot. I'm talking about RAG systems with vector databases that can understand context and meaning. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to build one using MongoDB's vector search with Langchain and FastAPI, the same stack companies are using in production everywhere right now for AI engineering. By the end of this video, you'll have a working system that can search through documents semantically. And trust me, when you drop this in your next interview or team meeting, you'll see exactly what I mean about standing out. Let's do this. All right, so what are we building? Well, we're building a pretty unique system. So if you go into our directory where you can get the code from the link below, and we just go into our front end and we say open up our index.html, we can see this system right here. It's called Coding with Roby AI, transform your business with advanced AI solutions. But this is a completely fake business with a completely fake website. But I just wanted to show something real because what we're gonna be building is a intelligent RAG system that understands our website and can answer questions for people who are visiting. So we have like home services um, about and frequently asked questions all right here. And it's all about like an AI consulting firm. If you go to AI chatbot and we go to our AI powered assistant, we can see our chatbot right here. Hello, I'm the Coding with Roby AI assistant. I can help you learn about like AI services, pricing, case studies, and answer questions about our company. What would you like to know? And if we come over here and we just say like, what AI services do you offer? You can also type anything you want. It's going to say, I apologize because I can't understand your request. Your backend server is not running. But eventually we'll be able to ask questions and it'll answer our questions about the business. And if it doesn't know, it'll just tell you it doesn't know. So it doesn't just give like users free access to open AI or whatever cloud model they're using. It's literally just going to answer questions using these models based on the data that it has about your website. But very first thing we need to do is head over to MongoDB Atlas. You're going to want to go to MongoDB Atlas. It'll be the first search result make an account, and when you make your account, it's going to bring you right here where you can create your first cluster. And we're gonna be creating our first cluster completely free so you can follow along completely. So if we go ahead and say create, it's gonna ask us how we want to do it. We can say completely free right here. We can name it whatever we liked. I'm just gonna say cluster one so we know that that's what I am creating. Now, the only thing I'm gonna do here now is uncheck the preload sample data because we're gonna be adding our own data in here. And now we can say create deployment. And just like that, it's going to be creating our cluster. And here it's gonna be like, hey, here's the user. So we can create a DB user, which is great. I'm going to copy this password because you don't wanna lose this password. We know that the username is accounts DB user, but we don't want to lose this password. And I'm gonna say create the DB user. And I'm just gonna close out of this right now. If we come over here now and we say get connection string, we can see that right here, we have the connection string for this project and for this cluster. I'm going to copy this real quick, just so we don't forget. And let's go into our .env .example. I'm going to copy and paste this file just so we can create it again. But I'm going to rename this to just .env. This is gonna hold all of our properties. Let's go back into here, grab your username and password, and just paste it right here inside the MongoDB URI. Now go grab that user's password that you have and just replace right here where it says DB password, replace that with your user's password. Now this information we will get in a little bit. 
And if you have an OpenAI API key, you're going to want to add that as well. You can get that from going to openai.com and signing up and creating your own account and registering it as your own API key. This API key, you're going to want to keep hidden. Mine will be invalid when this video goes live, but you want to make sure that your API key is completely hidden because it's your access to your OpenAI account. All right, now let's close out of this and let's create a new search and vector search. If we scroll down, we can see it has like get started first, make a cluster, then add data, create an index, run a search query. So let's go ahead and say, add my own data. Now this is adding data to your application. We're going to be using a vector search, but we can say add data where we just have to create our database name. Now I'm just going to name the database AI services DB. And the collection name is just going to be website contacts. If you open up additional preferences, there should not be anything there. Let's go ahead and click create. And now we want to create a vector search index. So we can create a search index or a vector search index. Let's go ahead and create a vector search index where we are going to want to create a vector search where this can be called vector index. And we want it for our website context. And this should pop up. We can say JSON editor next. And then we want to add this JSON embedding, which is going to say we're going to be using a type vector where we are going to embed the stuff. We are going to use our num dimensions of one, five, three, six, and then our similarity is going to be cosine. And then our filter meta source data is going to be the rest of the paths. Then we can say next and create the vector search index. And literally, that is all the steps you need to be able to create a vector database like literally the database we use in RAG systems on MongoDB. Like it is developing, it is creating, and we are about to have it live very, very soon. All right, and the status has been changed to ready. Let's go back into our code. And what we want to do now is add that vector search information that we just created before, right? So we want to call this AI services DB. The collection name is going to be the website underscore context. And then the vector index name is going to be vector index. And if you're not sure, it'll tell you right here. So database is AI services DB, website contacts, and vector index. Now what we want to do is go into our backend and we have this ingest data. What this is doing is it is going to be embedding all of our data inside our data slash content into something that we can put to our vector database for us to be able to match a similarity. So if we go through this, we can see it says load the JSON content, which is going to be all of this. We have our title and our content. So we have our page, which tells us about what page we're looking at. And then it has our sections and it has us about every single part of our application. And we are going to ingest that data using this ingest data Python file, which is going to grab that data embed it and add it to our vector database. All right, and to be able to run this, we just want to say Python backend. So we're going to go into our backend directory and say slash ingest our data dot pi. And when you run this, this is going to call our ingest data, which again is going to grab this data and our data slash JSONs. It's going to embed it and save it all into our MongoDB Atlas. So if we go in to our MongoDB and we like refresh, we should see that the like the size increases, right? That there's going to be now data inside our cluster. And we can see that it definitely is adding some data inside our cluster. Awesome. So now what we want to do now that that was all successful is we want to now develop our RAG backend system, like the actual thing that is going to be able to connect to our MongoDB Atlas and then also be able to take in the request from the user when they're using the AI chatbot and be able to give them an answer back. So if we go into our main.py, we have a few things happening. We have our app equals fast API where we just like, you know, initialize the fast API project. We have cores, which is configured for everything. And then we have our request, which is going to hold a question of type string, which is what the question the user is asking. And then our response is going to have the answer plus sources. And just right now, when the backend is started, we initialize our RAG system, which just sets up the RAG system using the libraries that we installed. And then we have the shutdown, which is when we turn it off. Then we just have like a typical health check for our endpoint. And that's about it. So what we want to do is add something right under our health check and right before we have this um, startup. 
So I'm going to create a couple spaces just so we can see better. I'm going to just close the terminal and I'll actually close this side view as well. And what we're going to do here is just say at app dot post, where we're going to call this endpoint of slash API slash chat of our response model chat response. And we're just going to name this function to be an async def chat where we're going to pass in the request of our chat request, which is going to have that question of type string. I'm going to make a couple more spaces just so we can see this a little bit better. So to start, the very first thing we want to do in here is run a try. And this is simply to log that we received the question and then validate the question. This is like our own kind of data input checking. Or we're just saying, hey, if we strip down the request, is it greater than zero? Because if not, if there's no question involved, then we just want to return an error of question cannot be empty or question is too long. And if not, well, then everything looks good. So we can set up our rag, which is the Git rag system, which we open that up. We can see this just our global instantiation of creating the rag system. And then we have ask, which we need to create in a little bit. And I'll kind of show you what that does. But right now we're just passing in the question. And then we want our rag to return the result back to our API, you know, log all of the sources that we get back. And then we can just return the chat response back to the user with JSON. And if anything wild happens, we have this accept, which is going to be at the opposite side of our try. So we're not really doing anything crazy here, right? This is just a normal API endpoint where we're using Pydantic and taking in the chat request, validating the input, and then we're creating the rag and then calling that rag with the question and then returning the response. However, the rag system is where it gets extremely interesting. Now, our rag system is going to be inside our rag system.py file where we are setting up our environment. We then have our open AI where we're grabbing all of our environmental keys and we are instantiating a class which takes in like our open AI to create the open AI embeddings or MongoDB. We have our database name and collection name for our Mongo Atlas. And then we have our vector store. And what's really interesting here is we're going to have this self dot prompt chat prompt template, which allows us to be able to create almost instructions that our rag is going to want to do. So we're telling our rag system that you are a helpful AI assistant for coding with Roby AI and AI service company. Answer the user questions based on the provided context, be professional, friendly, and informative. So the important instructions, if the context contains relevant information, use it to answer the question. Be specific and cite information from the context. If the context doesn't contain enough information to fully answer the question, say so honestly. Don't make up information that's not in the context. Use your answers concise but informative, two to four sentences typically. Use a professional but approachable tone. Context is going to be the context. And then the user's question is what we're passing in. And that's super interesting because now we have our self.prompt, which is going to be right here when we instantiate the rag. And we instantiate the rag right here when we call the get rag system. So we are instantiating this rag. Now, the only thing we're missing right here is right under our def format docs, I want to create a new function. Now, this function is going to be that ask question that we want to implement over here when we get our result. This is actually the power of the rag happening. And now, the first thing we want to do here is just create that ask question where it gets a question and it returns a response with sources. And now the two next important things that we need to use is this retriever, which means we are searching by similarity in our vector database. And then this just means how many arguments and like what is the number that we're trying to find, which just means we're going to retrieve the top four relevant chunks, which is going to be that semantic search that we're implementing. And then the self rag chain, which is actually the chain that happens to be able to create the rag and retrieve data. So let's go ahead and just add these two pieces of Python code where we get the relevant documents by saying relevant docs equals our self retriever dot invoke question and then our generate answer, which is our answer equals self rag chain dot invoke the question. We then want to go ahead and extract the source information, which is going to create the sources and the scene sources because we want to return where we got this data back to the user. All right, and then we're going to add this next chunk of code. We are then going to loop through the relevant documentation, which contains the top four chunks retrieved by the vector search. We're then going to extract the page name, which gets the page field from the metadata, homepage, pricing, frequently asked questions, and defaults to unknown if it's not found. 
And then we want to enhance with the specific information. So if it's a regular page with sections, we want to add section name, which is like example of like pricing or enterprise tier. And if it's from the frequently asked questions, we want to format it as a frequently asked question. And then we want to deduplicate the sources. So we, are, we have this set, which we use to track what's already been added and only append if there's an exact source string that hasn't been seen before. This prevents showing pricing when we're showing pricing multiple times. And then we want to return the result with only the top few unique sources. All right, and that's really all we need to get this RAG system running. So if we go back into our terminal and we CD into our backend, we are now going to be right here where we have our main.py file. So we can start up our main.py file by saying uvicorn main colon app dash dash reload. That starts up our backend application. And now if we go back into our, you know, chat bot, and we re ask it, what AI services do you offer? It's going to think it's currently at our fast API application, it's talking to our MongoDB Atlas vector and searching for information, we can see that it says we offer a range of AI services, including consulting, training and optimization. And it's kind of going through all of it. And it tells you where the data came from. Let's say, tell me about your pricing. Again, it's going to be looking in there and we can say our pricing varies depending on the package and services you choose. We offer a professional package, consulting packages, and we can see that all that comes from our pricing. However, what do you think happens if we now ask it a unique question about the pricing? And be like, do you ever lower the cost? Let's see what this says back. While we strive to provide competitive pricing for our services, the costs associated with AI projects are generally determined by the project scope and complexity. However, we do offer flexible pricing models and pilot projects starting at 10000 So again, it's looking at the case studies and it's finding information. However, what if I said, what is the best Black Friday deals for a new PC? Now, this has nothing to do with our project. If we can see that it says, I'm sorry, but the context provided does not include information about Black Friday deals or PC purchases. So it doesn't just like secretly give people a way to access your OpenAI API key or anything like that. It's truly just used for a rag to help the user that's using your system understand what's going on a little bit better. Now, of course, this was just a demo project. Being able to build these type of applications is becoming in such a big demand in the upcoming year and for the foreseeable future. You want to be able to learn these skills. So. If you enjoyed this project, just go ahead and comment what other type of projects you want to see. And hopefully I'll be able to build them in the future. Awesome. And until next time.